You're listening to the Tech Bytes podcast from the Packet Pushers. Today's conversation is about an SD-WAN deployment with a company called Wavin. That's a solutions provider for the building and infrastructure industry. Our guest is Gerben Bremer. He is managing network services EMEA at Wavin. He's deployed over 100 SD-WAN appliances from Fortinet, and Fortinet is the sponsor for today's episode. Gerben, welcome to the podcast. And first, uh, thanks for conducting this interview in English because I couldn't do it in Dutch. Uh, so can you tell us what was it that you were looking for in an SD-WAN solution, and then how did you get to Fortinet? Andrew, well, thank you. We were looking for uh, a replacement of our Uniper firewall uh, ecosystem. Basically, we were looking for an integration for one box for all solutions we were looking for. So you wanted one box that could do everything. You wanted a firewall, a router, SD-WAN, all in one package. Yes. We had multiple solutions in place. So we had a a Uniper firewall and some traffic shaper on top of it. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for SD-WAN capabilities. Uh, and that's how we ended up with uh, Fortinet. So that's that classic branch stack, router, proxy appliance, firewall, scanning, Wi-Fi, switches, and every branch was a really costly exercise in terms of capital, but also to operate. Yes. From management perspective, it was uh, difficult um, since we had multiple uh, appliances and um, um, and, and needed operational downtime and uh, operational maintenance. And if we do changes, we we could have impact on on other systems. So from operational and management point of view, um, I I like the concept of of putting everything into one box. Okay. So you were looking for that integrated appliance security and SD-WAN. So did you get to Fortinet uh, quickly or did you look around, have a look around at the market and see what your options were? We had a look around in the market. Uh, We also looked at uh, other vendors. We looked at cloud solutions. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we've got factories. Those factories uh, need protection. Uh, inside the factories, we 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 looked for uh, uh, several solutions that could also give us on-premise security what we needed, and also give us the external connectivity, so the SD-WAN uh, solution, and that's why we ended up with Fortinet. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? What you mean by what you wanted to do? Did you mean you were buying other products from Fortinet to use inside the factories, or there's something you can do with SD-WAN to help secure traffic going in and out of the factory sites? Yeah, so we were using the, um, the Uniper solution to protect our uh, inside network, which was which was running fine. Uh, we we um, uh, they gave us a good product uh, protecting that uh, internally, uh, but we also needed something to protect our external mm-hmm. uh, um, yeah resources, so web services, uh, cloud products, etc. So for this purpose, we had a look at uh, Fortinet. SD-WAN solution that could give us visibility of that traffic, but also implement directly security for all the streams that go to the WAN. So for example, web filtering, application proxying, SCADA analysis uh, for for the on-premise, of course. Can I ask a question? Because sometimes this factory networking is a little bit new to people. So we're seeing a lot of the factories be talked about as IoT, which really just means machines and technology that's in factories is now IP enabled. And they're streaming off telemetry or monitoring interfaces or operational interfaces are now network connected. And it was important to you to secure that. Is that is there any particular features in the Fortinet that help you with that? Yes. In the newer releases of the Fortinet, there's a, a solution to uh, protect operational technology. Uh, for example, we can do scan analysis. Uh, so we can see if somebody is uh, accessing our PLCs or mm-hmm. running commands towards our PLCs. And that kind of security is the kind of security we need, especially for the future, because uh, we get more and more PLCs. Uh, since we are a production company, uh, mm-hmm. we have a lot of production sites, and um, all of these sites are getting more and more equipment. Then- That's a feature I've not heard of before. It's not something that anybody else has listed to me, that there's actually like a, an industrial firewalling feature in the product. Yeah, because those are usually separate specific products for the SCADA industry, right? Yes. And we, we do also do have uh, additional products and mo- mostly they are created to monitor because mm-hmm. you don't want to influence OT processes. Right. <laughs> but from a firewall perspective, so from management uh, point of view, if there's traffic going to an OT network, we want to do additional uh, security uh, features. 
And mm. that's what uh, Fortinet is offering. I guess also too, it's the people who work at factories now have computers and are using computers. Whereas five years ago, they would have been operating them with the computers built into the machines. And now they actually have computers and they sit in offices and operate them remotely. Is that a factor too? It's a complete different world than five years ago. There's a complete transition ongoing. We, we were going from traditional uh, engineered systems to mm -hmm. IP-based systems. So we have to learn our staff IP. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so they, they, these are traditional engineers and we need to learn them how to protect their network, how to segment, how, how, IP, uh, how, how IP networks work, which requirements they should give on equipment. I went to it's like cooling systems and heating systems and like in factories now, everything's connected to a network Everything as far is as connected. airflow. You know, if you're doing a, a factory that's doing, you know, uh, HEPA filtered air to keep the dust out during the manufacturing process, you're monitoring the power, you're monitoring the operational status, you're monitoring the dust per millions and that sort of stuff. Exactly. We, we have production lines that in the past we had one or two sensors on them. Now mm. we have over 100 sensors on them and they're all IP based nowadays. Right. And, um, to give a simple example, we, um, we make our lightning of our factory smart. So um, the, the lightning bulbs are also controlled by IP. Um, and you don't want that one system can affect the other. So um, it's all segmented. It's all uh, protected by our uh, Fortinet firewalls. So uh, on the SD-WAN front as well, I assume you're also, are you getting into the cloud and did that have uh, an influence on how you wanted to build your connectivity? Like, are you using leased lines or MPLS and you wanted to move away from that? Yes, we, we still had some MPLS lines in, in place. And since our factories are literally in the middle of nowhere, we have a lot of different ISPs. Uh, we have a lot of different connection methods. So we were looking for a solution that, yeah, basically could connect anything mm -hmm. so we can phase out MPLS. So that's that our approach was uh, bring any any provider or bring any any type of technology, 4G, 3G, 5G, whatever, mm -hmm. connect it and let the device do the um, intelligence. So how does that look like? Let's say we have an application, uh, Office 365. Um, the user uh, uh, tries to access it. The, the appliance looks, hey, this is the best path at this moment for mm -hmm. Office 365. So we use the application steering to directly send it over that path. And that, that works very well. And then the, the problem was with uh, MPLS, we had guarantees over, over uh, bandwidth. And, and we could actually trust the uh, provider that um, we had uh, certain uh, quality. Mm. With Fortinet now, we can see by using the um, uh, Fortinet solutions and Forti Analyzer, uh, we can see what the quality of our links are. And we can see, so we get a little bit that control back uh, <laughs> what we used to have with MPLS. <laughs> you can trust but verify as well. You don't have to just take the ISP's word for it that they're meeting their SLAs. You can actually look for yourself now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, well, we had some dashboards uh, from the ISP uh, in the past where we could see the performance, and um, but not as in depth nowadays with uh, the Fortinet appliance. So we're quite happy with that. And it, yeah, it, it just by bringing in multiple lines uh, and of course working in the cloud because uh, yeah, we we um, we tend to uh, migrate a lot. Um, uh, by by using the cloud, uh, the MPLS became less and less important. So, mm. I think it's important for factories for a lot of people to understand that factories don't exist in the center of New York, sort of thing, you know, or in the you know in the high street of of Belgium, sort of thing. They're they're actually in regional areas, so that and nobody wants to live next to a factory, so they're often in you know oh, lots of empty space. And telcos don't go running fiber optic down the streets to those buildings, and you often get second rate telecommunications. And in the past, those factories didn't want telecommunications, right? So there's a real change there where telcos are saying, well, you know, a factory takes up 10 acres or 20 acres. Why would I run a cable out there to speed up the access? So you've got to make the most of what you've got. Exactly. And that's that's the problem we're facing at a lot of sites. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the most 
heard it. A reason was that the crown is much cheaper if if you buy it in the middle of nowhere. And since we need a lot of it, <laughs> that's the that's the main reason. The network so, comes uh, second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you started the engagement process for the fight for the SD WAN, how did you go about that? Did you just like get it and play with it? Was it as simple as that? No, we, we um, used a uh, managed service provider that helped us um, setting it up. And um, we, we actually took a lot of time designing it on how the traffic should look and uh, how we will implement it. Because I think that's the most important part. If you do an SUN implementation, spend some more time on the design, spend more mm-hmm. time on the, yeah, the way you want the device to behave. Mm-hmm. Then on the implementation, because if you do the design properly, you can implement very fast. Use the tooling, use Forti Manager. Uh, so use the the um, uh, tools that are available to make it rapidly deployable. You, you talked there about design, but when you actually got to it, so a lot of people say that SD WAN was pretty easy to get going and to get it rolled out. Was that your experience as well? You, like we always talk about spending time in design and getting it right, but I think with SD WAN, it's actually much easier to get into the implementation phase than it is with the old, you know, router, firewall, inspection, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's absolutely true. But if we add a lot of uh, uh, lines, uh, just to give you an example. Um, you need to have a certain rule set. So also in terms of priority. Uh, so uh, you need to think on forehand, what are my top priority applications mm-hmm. and, and make rules for those. So they have always the best line. And if you, if you don't configure anything, of course the SD-WAN will do its utmost best to, um, to send the traffic over the right path. But if, if there is congestion or if you don't have enough bandwidth, Hmm. then the rules come uh, uh, yeah, at, at place. So um, that's why you really need to think about designing it properly. So you're saying you had to take some time ahead of time to say, as the business, what applications do we want to prioritize and why before you started building rules and designs? Exactly. Yeah. 